This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take some older equipment sitting around that could be reused, and we're going to team it up with some newer equipment so that we can actually get even more functionality out of it. A G800 rotor from Yesu and the high gain YRC-3. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. All righty, so we start taking the new controller out of the box and out of the plastic wrapping. Now, the reason I've gone with this particular controller, the old controller that came with the two SG-800s uh, that Don had, AC4DM, uh, both of those were bad, or the one that he had was bad. And in a previous video, we, we were talking about how it looked like it was a victim of a lightning strike because we could see some of the components had arced to the chassis. Now you can actually get replacement parts, but they're not inexpensive. So I thought, well, let's update this particular rotor uh, from the standpoint of the controller design and I'll get a more compact digital version with memory presets on the high gain YRC-3. So we're just unboxing the controller, getting some power connected to it here. AC4DM is also looking at the back. You can see the USB RS-232 and the uh, uh, six wire connector on the back of the high gain. And as we're gonna see, this high gain is very flexible. It'll work with a lot of different models from Yesu, the G450 all the way up to, I believe, the uh, 2800. So Don goes straight to the instructions and we should have looked at these a little bit closer uh, as uh, as we'll see <laughs> as we progress through the video, uh, we ran into some issues and we wondered if the rotors that Don had acquired actually were bad uh, because we couldn't uh, initially get them working with the controller as we shall see. It's always a good idea <laughs> to read the directions uh, before you start hooking things up. But uh, we were all like uh, on Christmas getting a new gift, a uh, new present, and we wanted to see it working quickly. So AC4DM has a, a rotor cable already connected to the, the, we'll say the more weathered rotor that he had, and this is the cable that he has that will only plug in one way into this controller. And uh, he's uh, demonstrating that there. We're not gonna hook up a computer to it at this time. But we wanted to test it, so we've got it completely connected to the uh, more weathered rotor there on the right-hand side. We're going to power on the controller and let's see if we can get some uh, movement. Now we have no idea if this rotor is any good. So we've got a heading there in the big number and we can use the heading knob if we wanted to make an adjustment or we could use the two white buttons on the bottom there to move the, uh, to move the heading. So he can move the knob and then you can press the red button and it'll go straight to that heading. Or if you just want to use the white buttons left and right there on the bottom, you can also adjust your direction. And here's the back side of the high gain, just so that you can get a better view of what's back there. There's a fuse, of course, a USB RS-232. There's also, of course, a grounding lug. So now we really start saying, well, is this going to work the way we would hope? Uh, AC4DM is pressing buttons. Uh, we're thinking that, you know, something should be moving. Uh, we're even listening to the rotor to see if maybe it's just hung up. It's possible that it's, you know, been out in the weather and it's, it's just froze uh, or frozen. But nothing. We got nothing out of that rotor. It just did not move. So he's got another one, of course. He's always got inventory. So we hooked this one up and we're pressing buttons and knobs. Nothing. So now we're wondering, well, maybe these two rotors are bad. Sometimes when you purchase rotors from, uh, again, silent keys or people that have gotten out of the hobby, it's possible that they had them laying around and the reason they don't work is they've been struck by lightning or something like that. But Don just also happens to have a, a G450. Both of the rotors we tried it with were 800s and he's got a 450 up on his actual tower that he uses. And sure enough, if you notice the big number, it is changing and it worked just fine with the rotor he's got up on the tower. What we hadn't made the connection with is that this controller will work with AC rotors and DC rotors. And the 800s are DC rotors and the 450 up on his tower is an AC rotor and the controller comes out of the box ready to work with an AC rotor. 
but we're not sure about that at this point. So we've opened up the more weathered rotor, and sure enough, we, you know, we've definitely got some corrosion here, some rust on the, the bottom set of bearings because this rotor wasn't stored correctly uh, when it was uh, not in use. So we're not sure if this rotor maybe uh, you know had so much water intrusion that it's uh, maybe a uh, uh, burnout. Uh, so we're just going to run some tests. But again, the controller is not really working with this. But now that we've got the housing removed, exposing the bearings, there's nothing to prevent the rotor from moving. So if the bearings were stuck, then we were hoping that the motor would run connecting it to the controller. Uh, again, not realizing that it's a DC rotor and the controller is set up for AC. So we're going to do a quick power up here, let it go through its uh, boot up process. And then Don begins pressing buttons and again, nothing. Again, just watching the big number there in the middle. Uh, that flicker that you see there is just that. It's a basically there's a ponchiometer on the inside to kind of give you an idea of what heading you are on. And that still didn't move. So we, at the, again, if we'd gone back to the instructions, we would have known or we would have found out that uh, there's two types of rotors from Yesu, AC and DC. The high gain YRC-3 is capable of running either, but there's a menu option that we have to go and set, which we hadn't done at this point. But you know what? Sometimes there's good that comes out of uh, not reading the directions in this case, and that is we opened up both of these rotors and we got a good feel for what condition they were in. Uh, obviously we have one rotor with a lot of rust, and we'll have a different rotor that looks much, much nicer on the inside. AC4DM going to a schematic. Now, this is the other rotor, and you can see it's pristine. This rotor, even the housing, looks practically new. Uh, so we, you know, we're, we're starting to think, well, it can't be the rotors, probably, you know, to have two rotors that are bad, because rotors are not that sophisticated. So now, Don's read the directions, Northwest. and we're, this is a different day. And you, come up and you can see it's working here. with the uh, the less weathered rotor that he had. So we'll be basically coming back to north, and then it'll yeah. get a stop at some point. Yeah, see, it'll be, okay, see, there's theoretically is three, roughly 360. Right. So that way you went all the way from north around to north. But this has an overlap on it, remember. Okay. So then you can actually continue on. See, it says over because you've gone beyond that point. Right. You can go 13 to 14 degrees beyond... Near north. Okay, and then that's when you engage so, the well, right hand stop. So if you know it's like that, you know somebody a little bit, then you can go a little bit, but we're on that point. See, that's called it's called an overlap. See, right. And about 13, 14 degrees is uh, essentially where that right hand stop yeah, that's engages. Where that, that's where that one stops here. See, it pulls that thing over here and stops that switch. It's over on this side. See? Right. Stops it on that side. Uh, it's called coast. Okay. And what it will do, it will stop. It will actually shut off two or three degrees and in, in, in coast on in because if you have oh, antennas there, it'll have a little weight that's centrifugal. Again, that inertia, right? Yeah, that, that'll pull you on over. So it's at this point that now that we have the controller set up for DC, uh, it works just fine. Actually, both rotors turn just fine. We just need to rehabilitate the one with the rusted bearings, but it worked just fine. So at this point, we're getting into the menu of the uh, the controller, the YRC-3. Uh, you can see here we've got call sign, we've got uh, north stop, we've got, uh, uh, what else we got there? We've got sleep state, there's a calibrate option, which in fact, AC4DM is gonna look more into the calibrate and just make sure that it is set up uh, uh, as it should be from the factory. We also uh, was looking at this coast option. Another nice feature with this particular controller is you can use the heading knob as you see AC4DM using there. And instead of using the right or left buttons, if you just wanted to move a little bit, you can adjust your heading and then hit the red button. And it'll take you right to that particular heading. So uh, that can save you some time, and uh, that way you don't have to press the button all the time. A lot of times those left and right buttons, though, are to help you to kind of dial in or get a little bit more ex exact direction if you were trying to pick up that contact, moving it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right.
So it's at this point, now that everything is working, we start investigating the menu options with this controller. Now, I haven't talked about the buttons along the right-hand side, but one of the reasons I, I purchased the YRC-3 were for the memory presets. I might utilize one direction to participate on a net and save that as a memory, and that way I don't actually have to use the heading knob or the buttons on the bottom left. Um, I could just go straight to a memory. And uh, that was one of the reasons I purchased this. And then maybe if I want to participate with a different net uh, at a different heading, I can use a different preset. So there are several presets available to you. And as you're looking at the display here, you can adjust the LCD display to reverse the, the, white, uh, the, the blue letters on white uh, or reverse it to white letters on a blue background. We, uh, we thought we liked this particular LCD contrast better. Notice there's a calibrate offset call sign. He had already put the call sign in, so some of you might eagle-eyed might have noticed KY4BDP is already in the top left corner uh, in some of the shots. There we go. You can just see it there. And then you can also adjust your north stop and some other settings from within this menu. So at this point, it's just playing with some of these menu settings. Uh, you can go with the defaults, but usually you'll want to go in, make a couple of adjustments. And uh, in addition, because we had opened up the rotors, uh, we needed to go back and calibrate those to a particular heading so that the controller and the rotor are thinking the same thing when it comes to the pontiometer on the inside, uh, referencing where you're pointing. So I just adjusted the left stop there to south, a south heading instead of a north heading. Now, you'll notice there's an um, item number there of nine, and I've just gone into that. And this is where you can change the controller to work with either an AC rotor or a DC rotor. The two rotors we're trying to get working with the controller to go up on my tower are DC. This comes out of the box as an AC controller, or it's set up for AC. So you can actually go and if you hold the button down for five seconds, you can get back into the menu, come down to number nine, model type, and then I'm going to switch it back to DC. Still learning how to use the knob, but hold it in five seconds. Arrow down or scroll down until you get to number nine, press the button. Now turn the knob to change and then hit the knob to come out. So now it is set up for DC. And you can see the buttons are working again. That makes this controller, again, a direct replacement for the standard AC controllers because they're set up for either AC or DC for whichever model you happen to have purchased. So I'm really excited to get this controller in the shack. Of course, the rotor up on the tower. We have uh, an, a tower series that we're running currently for the tower. And so when we go to install this and the antennas, you'll be seeing us uh, utilize uh, this in a future video uh, uh, showing the use of the rotor with the three antennas. Now two of the antennas we're going to be using on that tower are directional. So we'll have a beam, a three band beam, and a Yagi, a two meter Yagi for being able to participate with some of the nets that are further distant than when I lived a little bit more locally. And then just to end our video today, uh, Don was talking a little bit about the calibration. He's worked on other rotors, just not the Yesu, so we're trying to find the documentation for doing the final calibration for this unit once we put it back together. Uh, and, uh, and that way we know that what it is showing on the display on the controller is where the rotor also thinks uh, you are currently pointing. It was cool to open up these rotors and see how they work. We hope you've liked this video on the uh, S, the G800 Yesu rotor and the high gain YRC-3 controller to go with it. Thanks for watching and 73.